Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today I'm creating um, this beautiful journal page in my Dilutions journal. The journal measures eight and three quarters by eight and a half, so it's a nice square, uh, mostly square journal. These are some of the other supplies that I'll be using. Um, I haven't used my uh, Faber-Castell uh, pit pins um, much, so I thought I'd go ahead and give those a try. I'll be using four of Sean's stencils. Um, fave words, the 12 by 16, the large stencil, the background words, spring leaves one and let it fly two. And then I'll be adding these butterflies. I didn't end up using all of the embellishments that you see. Um, and I'm using this beautiful napkin that I picked up at Tuesday morning. And then some uh, vintage music pages from my stash. Um, I'm not prepping the page because I'm going to be covering it completely with medium. So I'm just going to use my matte medium to uh, seal that. Uh, I did have a little trouble getting the nap napkin separated here. So this is a little trick that you can try. If you put a little tape on the corner and then uh, pull it up, it will reveal the layers and it makes it much easier to pull it off. Um, I did not discover that on my own. Um, I saw it on a YouTube video and it is amazing. Um, they can be kind of frustrating to get separated. So you do just want to make sure that you get it down to the one ply, just the top layer. I thought this one was really pretty. Um, even though a lot of the pink flowers did get um, covered up in the end, um, it ended up turning up out really pretty anyway. So I'll be applying that napkin with my Liquitex matte medium as usual, giving that a really good coat. And as you can see, I did put some parchment paper um, on the sides uh, or behind each of the pages um, just to protect the other pages. And it's really nice because it catches a lot of the mess. I'm just finishing up, applying that um, napkin. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tear off the excess off of the sides. And off camera, um, while I was drying, I did... Um, take off that border that was on the sides um, and so now you can see some rough edges there. Um, it didn't really matter because I ended up covering it up with my um, vintage music pages here um, but I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do again until um, I got going so. And I'm using my little corner punch to round those corners because the page pages are round in this journal so it is really handy. So I'm just cutting that on down to size so that I can um, cut that top corner. And then I'll be doing the same with the other side. Again, applying it with my Liquitex Matte Medium. And here's where I'm using my artist pit pin. This is the Faber-Castell uh, pit pins. And I started with the nougat color and then I changed it to the secondary brown, but it ended up being way too red. So I did switch back to the nougat color. Um, the key to this um, technique is that you do need to have a, a smooth surface for the, for you, for to have the ability to blend those in. As you can see, I'm able to smudge out that color. Um, if that was on a, a non-porous surface, that would not work. So um, you do want to make sure that's got a good coat of gel medium or something. I'm using my black archival ink from Ranger to go ahead and do some stenciling. This is uh, Jean Petit's Let It Fly 2 stencil. This is a new one to me, so I'm really excited to use it. I did use it in an um, some tags that I made a couple weeks ago um, that I didn't videotape but or didn't record but um, I liked them. I like the solid image so I'm just putting that here and there around both of the pages. This is a full spread, two pages. And I'm using my Deco Art Crackle Paint to go ahead and add some texture to the page. I like me the texture so 
Um, I always think I'm going to go lighter on this stuff. And then when I get into the process, it just, I just keep going and it's just so much fun. And I love the crackle. So, um, I am, my intention is to spend a little bit more time in my art journal because I really want to be able to practice some of the techniques that I have um, watched and that I'm aware of, but that I have not really tried very much. So that's kind of my goal in the near future. I'm going to be using Stays on Ink in Olive Green to go ahead and use the Spring Leaves uh, 1 stencil and just do some leaves around the page. I'm going to do it on the top and the bottom on both sides. Um, the coverage was really good on this. Um, I had intended to use the Deco Art Premium um, paint in the sap green and the green gold for the leaves, but it didn't create a very solid um, Im image. And so I did wipe that off and I did cut that out of the video. The stays on ink is really, uh, really nice to work with on acrylic paint on an acrylic paint surface. So thought I would give that a try. I don't have a lot of the colors, but I do have a handful. And they are permanent once dry. That ink, that is. Also using my makeup brushes. So I did add to my collection so that I have um, a brush for different um, color families so that I don't mess up, um, mess things up by using um, the a sponge for light and dark colors. And then this is background words stencil from Sean Petit as well. And I'm going to be using that one in the bottom. And it talks about fearing, fear less, hope more, etc. You'll have to check it out in her shop. It is just a really versatile script stencil that um, makes it really easy to add some script to your um, page or your canvas or whatever it is you're working on. And it's in this really nice script um, writing. So I really like it. So I'm just putting that here and there again around both of the pages just to create some interest as well as just to really um, use that, um, have some more black on the page. And then just one more spot here up at the top. And then I did come in with my Deco Art Premium Paint. This is the green gold. And I'm going to just be playing um, back and forth with the green gold and the sap green hue um, to create some color around the focal image, which is the, all those flowers in the middle. And it looks kind of, kind of like a hot mess at this point, and I really wondered was that the right move but in the end it is absolutely gorgeous the page is really deep and yet very bright um, which i really liked because i do tend to go towards really darker colors um or my projects tend to go really dark um, so it was really nice to have this have this really sunny feel to it um, so i was really happy with it And I am coming in with a couple of other colors of the Liquitex Heavy Body Paint. Um, this is Brilliant Purple, and then I'll be also using Medium Magenta. And that's just because I want to be able to bring out the pink and the purple in that flower that kind of looks kind of weird, like a face or something. Um, but um, I did want to bring out that, accentuate those colors um, in other places on the pages. And I, again, I really liked how it turned out. Um, art journaling is just really about play. And so um, I really found, have found the last two videos I've done have been art journal pages and they're extremely freeing for me. And um, I, I think they would be for you too. Um, if you haven't done any art journaling, I would just encourage you to get out whatever supplies you have and just play around, just see what the paint does. 
um, use contrasting colors, you know, use black and white, um, really um, just play um, because it does kind of set your creativity free as it um, doesn't have, it doesn't feel like it has as many rules to it, um, at least in my thinking. Um, although I know that art is um, in in total is a very supposed to be a very freeing experience. Um, I don't always find it to be freeing um, because I'm pretty perfectionistic um, and an art journal just allows me to be a little bit more spontaneous so I've really enjoyed it. And there's just a close-up of that paint and the crackle and some of the wrinkles in that napkin just really really gorgeous. Um, this time I'm going to do a burnt umber light glaze because I, again I wanted to have um, some brownish color settle into the cracks and the folds of the of the napkin and it did just that it didn't darken the page in fact I felt like it kind of gave it a little bit of a light look um, and yet kind of antiqued it without being too dark so here coming in again with my black archival ink from Ranger and this is the uh, fave words, excuse me, fave words, um, and this is the 12 by 16 size, which I just got and absolutely going to adore it because I love all these words and having them in a larger uh, size is going to be fantastic. So again, uh, check out um, Sean's shop and um, the the links that are on um, all of the, the supplies that I, sorry, all the supplies I'm using will be um, on my blog um, and I will have them linked also in the video description but you will need to head over to the blog to be able to actually have clickable links um, and I do have an affiliate link for Sean Petit's stencil so if you want to go ahead and check that out and if you do um, click on those links I do get a small commission on those sales which is really nice um, and it, it, it is no, uh, no extra cost to you at all so um, while I was just chatting there, I did come in with a black permanent pen and just complete the lines in that stenciling uh, on those letters. And I picked a couple of butterflies from my stash just to add a little bit of pizzazz in my little butterfly garden here and uh, just put, put those um, on the page uh, on opposite sides. And then I'm going to put these little bling things on. I'm not a real blingy girl but I just really loved the colors of these little um, dots and so I'm adding those around the page as well. I am applying them with a little bit of heavy gel just to make sure that they stick nice and, and good. So, And I have found that when I'm dealing with adhesive, if I use a baby wipe um, and just kind of pat, pat it, then I have a lot better success. So my last step is I'm going to use my Rembrandt Soft Pastel to do all of my edging. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll hop on over to the blog and check out the supply list and go ahead and grab yourself some stencils if you're so inclined. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, as I've mentioned before, it does allow me to be more visible on YouTube and allows more people to be able to see my art. It's just the way that YouTube works. So again, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.